Here on the table in front of me is a gray, kind of nondescript Chromebook. And you'd be forgiven for looking at it and just being like, yeah, look, it's another gray Chromebook. But I'm telling you, this one has something special, not just under the hood, but on the outside as well. And I have a hunch about why I think this one might end up being one of hopefully many Chromebook Plus models that are coming. Let, let me explain. So a quick bit about Chromebook Plus, uh, you may have read about it or heard about it like Chromebook X. It's been going around for a few months at this point. And the whole idea, like we've talked about this on the podcast a lot, it's been on the website a lot. So check those things out if you haven't already. But the whole idea is Google basically creating a sub brand almost of Chromebooks that allows them to say, okay, if you're going to get the, the Chromebook Plus, which I think that it's going to just end up being like a plus next to it. Joe actually kind of came up with that that idea there. Uh, and I think that's probably what it's going to be. There's probably just going to be a plus logo of some sort. I don't know. Uh, whenever this all rolls out and that will kind of signify that these devices are a little better generally in use than a standard Chromebook. Now that doesn't mean that they're going to have just the highest end specs or that they're going to have like wild screens or these crazy new features. I don't think it's going to be about that at all from what we can tell. Really, it's going to be more about the end user experience and then keeping it to a uh, decent price category. And so think about things like um, the Pixelbook Go. That's a perfect example of a device that would be a perfect like Chromebook Plus device because that device was a little more affordable than, you know, the other Google made Chromebooks. It just had something about it that made you want to pick it up and use it. And for years, I think people have used them. I mean, I think Joe just stopped using the Pixelbook Go on a daily basis uh, with the introduction of the HP uh, Dragonfly Pro. And that's an expensive Chromebook that does all kinds of stuff right. And we've talked about it. We love that Chromebook. It's really awesome and it's great to use, but it's expensive. It's $1,000. And so uh, from what we can gather, you know, Google has kind of figured out, like, look, there is a whole swath of uh, people that want affordable Chromebooks, but there are things that we can do to help manufacturers make them a little nicer to pick up and use. And this device kind of flew under the radar. I don't even know how long this one's been available. I found it uh, on Lenovo a couple weeks ago on Lenovo's website. And when I did, I saw the, the markings and stuff. It's called the Slim 3i. So I meaning like Intel. So if you see a, a Lenovo Chromebook with I in there, it's mean it's an Intel device. So we've had a whole review and stuff on the Slim 3. So I just kind of thought it was a maybe an Intel-based Slim 3. Like nothing really had changed. And that device is fine. Um, you know, the, the processor was a little slow in it. But I thought, you know, hey, uh, it's not going to be wildly different than that. It's probably the same thing. So I got looking at it and I'm like, hmm, those are, those are interesting specs. Uh, you know, it, it bumps up to 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. And the new i3, the Intel 12th Gen N series i3. So it's an N305 processor. We hadn't tested one of those out either. And... You know, once once I saw those things, it, it kind of got me interested. And then I'm not going to go through the whole process of how I got my hands on one of these, but we have it in the office. And I was kind of so excited when it came in and wanting to see what this thing kind of was bringing to the table that I went in and busted it open and logged in. And instead of doing an unboxing, we're doing this video because I really do think this might be one of the devices, I didn't say this in the opening, but this might be one of the devices that ends up being uh, made into a Chromebook Plus device. Now they're gonna retrofit some devices that are already on the market with this branding. Uh, I think this would be one of the ones. Now in our post about this, we talked about the some uh, devices that had leaked, uh, basically some, some code names that had leaked. Well, just so happens this is one of those. Uh, this is one of the devices that's on that list. So. I feel pretty confident about that. And then after using it for just a couple days, um, if if the code name and the you know the internal specs and the price it's on sale for like 419 bucks right now, if all that didn't clue us in to the fact that this could be a Chromebook Plus model, using it and handling it for the last couple days has completely solidified this fact. And I really do think uh, this is going to be one of those devices. And instead of going through all the specs and stuff on this, I just want to show you some of the things and tell you some of the things about this device that I feel like make it kind of unique. Okay, so from the outside, there's nothing that would denote that this is something special or something different. It actually looks pretty standard. It's not the thinnest thing in the world, even though it's called a slim. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but... Uh, for over the Slim 3, they added some ports. So now you've got a USB-C, USB-A headphone microphone jack. I don't want to fall into this. I'm not trying to do an unboxing here, but 
uh, USB A over here, full size HDMI in Kensington. Uh, you got downward firing speakers and some fan ports. That small core N305 processor does still utilize fans, even though I don't think I've even heard them ever kick on in this. But here's what's more important. As soon as I picked this thing up, got it out of the box, I was like, ooh, there's something just like substantial, not heavy, but like rigid. And that's that's true of a lot of Chromebooks when you first have them, you know, they're closed up and you pick them up. But I don't know, there's just something about the bottom of it. So anyway, moved on, popped it open. When I did so, I went through the setup process and what I realized immediately was, man, that keyframe feels great and it sounds great. You can kind of hear that. It's backlit as well. So you can kind of see the backlighting on the keys there. Let me hide the hide the light there. And so I was like, wow, really, really good backlit keyboard. And then I immediately picked it up and realized part of that is the entire bottom of this chassis is absolutely rigid. Like Pixelbook Go HP Dragonfly Pro rigid. You pick this thing up, there's no bend, no creak, no anything. I mean, this thing feels amazing and it's all plastic. So manufacturers out there, you can make all plastic bottom chassis and not have them creaking and moving and bending all over the place. This is a perfect example of a device that is made of plastic and does not feel like it. Like it just is so rigid. I love the way this Chromebook feels. And so because of that, you don't get a lot of movement on the top portion up here when I, I'm putting good pressure on it. You can see a little bit of movement there. And then that just kind of frames up the, the keyframe really nicely to work very, very well. So just mwah, beautiful keyboard on this thing. But then it goes down to the trackpad as well. Trackpad is perfectly seated. It's definitely mylar, it's not glass. Not once have I felt the need to wipe it off in a couple days of using it. The click is sure and comfortable and using it is just great. Again, proof that you don't have to have the highest dollar Gorilla Glass trackpads to have a really nice trackpad on your device. And then we come up to this screen up here and it's a standard 14 inch 1080p screen, but, and I can't turn it up all the way, but uh, the brightness gets up to what I tested about 350 nits. The colors look amazing. So it's, and it's anti-glare, touchscreen, but anti-glare. And so it's held up, you know, I've had it in uh, coffee shops and stuff like that. Uh, took it outside a little bit. It's not going to hold up, you know, under direct sunlight, I don't think, but being near windows and all that kind of stuff, everything's just fine with that. So the screen looks really great too. So sat underneath my big quad HD screen and hooked into that, pushing it at 120 Hertz, no problems whatsoever. So now you've got the screen knocked out it's a great screen, it's touch. So it does all the stuff that you want it to do. Um, and the performance is strong enough with the eight gigs of RAM and this N305 processor that even on my big display at 120 Hertz, I'm not running into any issues. I haven't run any benchmarks or anything on it, but I've not felt the need to. Like, it just is fast. And I can have all my stuff open that I would have on, you know, a Core i7 processor and have it all working just fine on this device. Again, running a Quad HD 120 Hertz screen at the same time. And then, you come to the camera, which is another key part of the Chromebook Plus thing that we found uh, code for, the uh, 1080p webcam. Um, let me make sure it might be Quad HD. I'm pretty sure it's 1080p. Let me see here. Uh, get out of here. Yeah, so 1080p. Let me expand this a little bit just so you can see it. Um, but it's a solid camera that, man, the colors look really good. I can turn it back there to the dark area of the room. You can see Joe just fine. It's not crushing shadows all over the place. Uh, so the camera's good. Um, and it's got a privacy shade up top too. So you can flip that thing open and closed. Um, so you're getting all like the nice benefits here of higher end Chromebooks. And this thing I think is 499 normally. It's on, like I said, it's on sale for I think 420 bucks at Lenovo's site, but I can't express to you what it's like um, to use this Chromebook, like picking it up and taking it places and taking it home and using it on the couch and then using it at work and knowing that the, the performance isn't a problem, knowing that the screen I look at all the time looks great and functions great, that the keyboard experience feels awesome, that I don't have to get a dongle out to hook it up to anything, that it's still small enough and light enough to throw in my bag, but when I pick it up, it doesn't feel flimsy or, or poorly made. They're, the lines are all lined up nicely and everything feels considered. That's the, the word that keeps coming to mind. This thing is considered. And being a device that's not crazy expensive or highly touted like the most powerful Chromebook ever made, it just delivers on an experience that is one of the best ones I've had in a long time. I'm not kidding. Um, and 
I, there's a chance, I guess, with the way boards are that this might might not be a Chromebook Plus, but the chances are pretty slim. And so what I feel like is that we are getting a kind of a glimpse at what we're go, we're, we should expect down the road uh, once Chromebook Plus rolls out, whenever that happens. We, we feel like it's going to be in the fall or you know in the late part of the year, but this Chromebook is very exciting in that respect. Now, without Chromebook Plus coming, I would still review this very, very highly, and I would say all the same stuff about it that, man, it feels like for whatever reason, Lenovo chose to just be really considerate with the way that they built this thing. But I know that that's probably not just Lenovo. I really do feel like part of this is Google saying, look, if you're going to have Plus on it, if it's going to be a Chromebook Plus and get some of those extra software features that we think are coming, but mainly get this kind of badge of approval from Google, it's going to have to feel like this to use it. And there's no way I can give you a spec sheet of what it feels like to use this thing. You just have to trust me. I've handled a lot of Chromebooks. And if you've ever handled any of the Chromebooks that I, that I say, man, this thing feels considered. It feels well made. The Dragonfly, the Pixelbook Go, the original Pixelbook, you know what I'm talking about. You know what it, what it looks like, what it feels like to use a device that... I don't know, it's just been thoughtfully put together. This is one of them. And the Lenovo Chromebook Slim 3i, I don't know if I said the whole title at any point uh, in this video, but that is a device that I really, really think you should consider unless you wanna wait and see what some of these other Chromebook Plus devices end up being. I don't know what they're going to be yet. Uh, I just, I know that if this is what we're looking at, if this is what it's gonna be like, man, I am excited for Chromebook Plus. And if you're watching this and it's the first time you've heard about Chromebook Plus, you should be excited about it too. But you can read more about it on the web uh, at chromeunbox.com. Like we're, we're talking about it as much as we can anytime we find new news about it. Uh, but I think it's going to be an exciting time for Chromebooks in the coming weeks and months as Chromebook Plus begins to roll out. But guys, that's it for this one. Definitely we'll be doing a review on this device because I love it. I, I just, I really do love it. And I can probably tell you the review is going to be kind of glowing. But uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.